This show was made possible through the support of FNX, First Nations Experience. You're on native ground. I'm Daniel Herrera of the Miwok Nation. And I'm Belwanji of the Sunnaboyne Sioux and Mandan Nation. Welcome to our original series. In today's episode, we visit famous Hollywood Boulevard with ONG reporter Bronwyn Walsh. She'll come face to face with aliens, ogres, magicians, cowboys, and Indians as she walks down Hollywood's Walk of Fame. Now let's go to Hollywood, where dreams are made and dreams come true. to On Native Ground. My name is Bronwyn Walsh, and you are here on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. We are in front of Grauman's Theater, where all Hollywood blockbusters premiered back in the day, and it's still up today. All the stories, all the movies, all the good people and good vibes. I gotta bounce out, that's my ride. We are here in front of Hard Rock Cafe. Seminole's holding it down. Hard Rock's all over the country, all over LA. And now we're hitting up one of the most profound and renowned stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Mr. Alfred Hitchcock. He did Psycho with the shower scene, the knife. You are standing right atop Houdini's star. Don't blink. So how does it feel to be back in the future? <laughs> how was it talking to our ancestors back in the day? You're scaring me, Scream! All he has to do is stand there and look at me. So what brings you here, Zoro? What brings you here to this beautiful place called L.A.? Cirque du Soleil! Cirque du Soleil! So you're standing... Cirque du Soleil, the theater. The theater. It means the Can you Oscar. tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, it means the Oscars, it means the movies, it means the film industry. It's what brings everybody to L.A., the film yeah. industry. Yep. I am the Zorro, I am in the Walk of Fame, I am on the native ground. Native Ground, we are standing right in front of El Capitan where dreams come true. Another really great theater to go to. You can only find it in LA and my bus is here so I'm gonna bounce out. But where are you guys from? I'm New Zealand. I'm Briar. And I'm Journey. And, and we're, we're on Native, Native Ground. Ground! On Native Ground was at the red carpet pre-Oscar party at the Los Angeles Center Studios where the famous Aerobi Theater was hosting an Academy Award screening. ONG's reporters interviewed stars from Broadway's Raisin in the Sun and the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Also on the red carpet was Viola Davis from The Help and Indian Country's very own Saginaw Grant. Some of you may even recognize characters from TV's The Wire and The Walking Dead. Now here's Martin Sensmeyer and Bronwyn Walsh on the red carpet. I'm Martin Sensmeyer. I'm on uh, Native Ground here in LA Center Studios at uh, downtown Los Angeles. We're at the red carpet pre-Oscar party event and we're here with these three beautiful women. We're here modeling for LL consignment as well as just doing some modeling and greeting and hosting for the pre-Oscar party. Um, I actually just moved here from Maryland and where I represent is Miss Maryland United States 2012. So I'm so excited to be here and be sharing this event with these lovely beautiful women <laughs> next to me. Yeah, that's good. And so you guys got any favorites this year for the Oscars? Take with Vonze. She's she's so cute. She has so much going on, so much spunk. I, I hope that she brings it home. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. And of course, Denzel. He's my. I actually, I saw I, I saw his movie twice, so I think I probably liked it. <laughs> How are you, Oba Babatunde? Here, nice to meet you as well. How are you doing tonight? It's a very energetic night. It's a wonderful night, and I'm thrilled to be here in support of the Roby Theater. Um, I happen to know Ben Guillory and also Danny Glover from the inception of when they started this company. And they do great work. And it's important that I be here to support and help raise funds for this effort of continuing the Roby Theater to be able to continue. Because they provide young people and, and older people with an opportunity to have really quality work. And that's really what it's about at the end of the day. What are some of your recent works in the industry and in your career? Well, you know, uh, I just completed a brand new feature film. The name of it is If I Tell You, I Have to Kill You. That's the title of it. It'll be released in, in April. Um, 
Then there's, of course, I did uh, Santa Pups for Disney this year, last year, and I also did The Last Fall, which is a very interesting movie. If you haven't seen it, I would respectfully suggest that everybody get see it because it is about what happens to the players on the NFL, in the NFL, after they're no longer in the NFL. Very, very powerful piece. There's another film that I also did last year called Monica. So there will be, in the next four to six months, about four new feature films released. Well, congratulations on all your work. Thank you very much. Nice to have met you. Delena, how's it going? Oh, really well. It's wonderful. I just got back into Los Angeles about three weeks ago. So you want a little bit of a trip? Oh, yes. I was working in, um, at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, so I'm back now. Oh, wow. So you, you get to do some Shakespeare plays? For two years. Wow. How was that? It was fun. It was a lot of fun, although I miss LA. I have to admit, I miss being in film and television, so I needed to get back, and I also miss my community. Mm -hmm. I felt so disconnected out there, so it's nice to be here and to be around my people. Mm. So we're going to see you something in, in, in film pretty soon? Hopefully so. <laughs> up, so. How long have you been acting? Oh, goodness. I feel like I, w I came out of the womb doing it. Um, <laughs> But I would say in terms of professionally and seriously, my journey began in Los Angeles seven years ago. Right. How would you describe this atmosphere, this L.A. atmosphere, especially when you first got here? I would say L.A. was an adjustment. Um, it can take a little while before you get started. But I think for me the key was is surrounding myself with good people, believing in myself, and to really train and take it seriously, to not think that, you know, just being here is enough because it's not. You know, there's a lot of people that want to do this. You have to find your own voice and be true to your passion and never compare yourself to anyone. You, as an individual, have something to offer. We're here at Los Angeles Center Studios at the red carpet pre-Oscar party with a talented actor, Saginaw Grant. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I did The Lone Ranger. Yeah, with Johnny Depp. That'll be out July the 3rd, I think. My character in the role is Big Bear, mm -hmm. and I did uh, HBO Family Tree. Mm -hmm. Which tribe are you? I'm Second Fox. Like Jim Thorpe. I am, yeah. How long have you been working in film? Pretty close to 25 years. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show today, and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day and have a great time tonight. I'm Martin Sensmar. We're here on Native Ground here at Los Angeles Center Studios, the pre-Oscar red carpet party with their actor, Chad Coleman. Hey, brother. How you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic, man. This is my first time at the Roby Theater, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, the man it was named after, of course, Paul Robeson, uh, uh, just an amazing trailblazer. Uh, Danny Glover, you know, Danny Glover. Uh, another amazing trailblazer. So um, mm -hmm. I'm following these guys' footsteps, so it's just an honor to be here to support mm -hmm. his theater. Growing up, you kind of looked up to these guys. Without a doubt, brother, that's, that's, that's easy, you know. These guys were doing amazing work and, you know, ins inspiring work. So, yeah. Now, you're doing amazing work. We've seen you on The Wire. You're on now on The Walking Dead. Yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about your uh, acting experience in L.A. Oh, man. You know, initially I came out here a while back and worked at the Mark Taper Theater, you know, the Mark Taper Forum. And uh, that was my first introduction to L.A. and excited, bright lights, all of that, you know. And then eventually, by the time I got the wire, I would come out for pilot season. So I was bi-coastal, which I still am. But, you know, L.A. is a land of opportunity, man. And uh, whenever you get an opportunity to showcase your talent on the world stage, you want to do that. And, you know, you don't get to do that if you don't come through L.A. Now, if you could say five, five words to, to a kid trying to make it in this business, wherever they're at in the world, what would it be? Work hard. Be persistent. Persevere. Good words. Chad Coleman, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being on the show today, man. And I love the name of your show, and I love your community, man. Thank the you. Native American community uh -huh. is an inspiration as well. And we've been through a lot, too, you know, mm -hmm. in the relationship and, between and Africans together. and African Americans, yes, and Native Americans, man. M amazing amount of respect for the just the spirituality. And the pride and, and the way y'all look out for each other. I love it. Thank you. You Thank got you. it, I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. I'm Martin Sensmar here on Native Ground. We're here at Los Angeles Center Studios, the red carpet pre-Oscar party. We're here with Ignacio from Nickelodeon. Giddy. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Man. Real quick, I go by ROK. I'm a recording artist with At Risk Records, Def Jam Interscope. I go by ROK, but my real name for acting is Ignacio Alcala from Nickelodeon's Gibby. We just got picked up. This industry 
you have to have substance, you know? And I'll tell you, on the native ground, I like that. Because this is where we are, baby. This is native soil. Without the native ground and without the positive spirits of our ancestors, you won't have us. I've had a 26-year career in theater, film, and TV, and I continue to plug along and dream big. And with my husband now, I started a production company. Right. The Julius Tenon. I'm a producer-actor. I've been acting for over 30 years, but now I'm focusing more on producing because we uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And so we had to uh, put together a production company so we could find great narratives for an African-American woman of a certain you who happens to be my wife. And that's what we've done. And so now we're looking forward to what the future holds. What does the future hold for you guys? Do you have any plans? Well, plenty. I mean, we have we have a slate of films. Uh, we have a slate of films, several, and uh, we're just aiming to get those things produced. And it's a lot of hard work to do that. You realize, as an actor, it's a lot of hard work when you're on a set. But it's equally as hard to get projects done and made. So you just have to keep working hard and focus, and then it uh, it can happen. I've been nominated twice, twice. for an Oscar. She's mm -hmm. been twice nominated. Mm -hmm. We're so glad we get to speak with you guys on Native Ground today. Thank, you, Thank so you so much. So we're here with the talented actor Skylin Brooks. What are you, what are you feeling? Uh, um, I'm definitely feeling good. I'm, I'm happy. Uh, I'm sponsored by Jordan. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. And uh, I'm happy to be here right now. You got your Jordan gear, man. You're looking fresh. Got the nice kicks on. How do you feel? <laughs> How about you, man? Tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, what you got going on? Well, I just turned 14. My birthday was uh, last week, and uh, thank you very much. I heard you were just recently at Sundance. Yes, I was. My movie uh, had made it. Uh, George Tillman's The Inevitable Defeat of Mr. and Pete. Okay. Okay. We'll look forward to seeing that. Seeing you on the big screen this coming year. <laughs> yeah. Skylin Brooks. Tell our audience a little bit about yourself and your Emmys. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm so honored to be on it here this evening. Uh, this is a, a wonderful event and uh, I'm on the board of the, the Roby Theater and have been for some time. Out of all the work that I've done over the years, of course theater is my first love, though I've, you know, uh, work in all of the medias. What's it like growing and shaping yourself in such an artistic sphere? Now that's a terrific question. I wish I had a terrific answer for that. What is it like growing and shaping yourself in such an artistic sphere? Because you know, as a, to become a strong African American actor, mm -hmm. there are those underlying factors and, and obstacles yes, in which you have to yes, overcome, absolutely. you know? There's an old saying that life for me ain't been no crystal stair. That's a, yeah. a, a, a Langston Hughes poem. Yeah. And uh, I can say that. In showbiz, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. But it's been a stair that has helped to shape, I think, my character, put my character to the test. And of course, uh, I, my foundation is in my love for the craft. And that's why I love stage and the Roby Theater so much, because it pays so much attention to the craft of acting, the craft of being an artist as opposed to being a star or a famous person. And that's what I am grounded in and dedicated to. I started out in the original production of a Broadway play called A Raisin in the Sun, opposite Sidney Poitier and Ruby Dee in 1959, wow. when I was 12 years old. So now you have an idea how old I am. Yeah, I have an idea. Okay. <laughs> and that was my start on Broadway. And I've been at it ever since. So something struck a chord, and here I am. Well, it's such a pleasure to get to speak with you and your wife today. Thank you. So you. You're such an inspiration, I mean, to the theater. You built the foundation, you know. You definitely have something to say about it. And I'm just glad you said it on Native Ground. And I thank Native Ground for giving me this opportunity. Well, I was on the HBO show The Wire, great show. Um, I was on Everybody Hates Chris. I got a chance to work with Chris Rock. And um, right now I'm uh, new on a new show called Blood Brothers. It's going to be out soon. Okay. Being in L.A., man, how do you like it? I love L.A. I'm originally from D.C. L.A. is the place where I need to be at, so I, I love it. You know, L.A. Is, is a great place.
Tonight, we're also presenting an episode of Joseph's War Pony. This new vignette is about Joseph and his transition to urban life, where his father tries to convey words of wisdom to his son. Come on, Joseph. This is your war pony. See? I told you I'm not ready. Hey, Chief. Isn't your boy a little old to be uh, riding training wheels? On the reservation, we didn't even have bikes. Our people aren't made for bikes. When a horse stops moving, it doesn't fall over. Sure thing, Chief. I'm not a chief. Joseph. I think it's time to retire the training wheels. What? No, no, Dad. Do you know how dangerous it is out there? I mean, did you know that 630 people died just last year from bicycle-related injuries? Now, with the speed that I was going, if you consider the velocity and this ill-fitting helmet, I could have been seriously injured. Joseph, you're graduating at the top of your class. You got a job this summer at a biophysics firm. You're a smart guy. You're not a coward. For Christ's sakes, just last week you asked me if you could go skydiving. No, no, th that's totally different, all right? Because you get to jump out with a certified professional. And do you know how many people died last year just from skydiving? I don't have a clue. 54. 54. Yeah. I decided to take a different tactic. If inspiration wasn't going to work on my son, perhaps a little deception was in order. Whoa! Hey, bro. Uh, you all right? Yeah. <clears throat> all right, here you go. You all right? Yeah. Took a little fall there. Mm. Yeah. You know what your problem is, bud? You gotta start working out. You know I'm a personal trainer. Yeah, I Here, heard. let me give you my card. Give me a call, man. We'll work it out, you know? Work some iron. I'll get you running again. All right, baby. See you around, buddy. Yeah. Thanks, Chet. Dad, somebody's been messing with my training with stabilizers. You know, in our tribe, we have a legend about animal spirits. Sometimes your animal spirit is looking out for you, protecting you. But sometimes he'll make your bow break when you're in the middle of firing off a shot. Sometimes he'll put a hole in your canoe when you're in the middle of a lake. It's a way to test your character. A way for you to prove your courage. Equipment malfunctions account for 30% of all bicycle fatalities. Now, can I just get a wrench? Yeah. Agnes, it's uh, election day and I'm gonna go vote. So, today's election day? Yeah, it, it is. Um, I take it you're one of the 80% of people who don't vote when it's not a presidential election. No, I'm just not 18 yet. Oh yes, yeah, th that's right, you're not 18. No. I turned 18 a week ago. Did you get anything good for your birthday? I got a book uh, on Sitting Bull and some Eagle feathers, there wasn't a, there wasn't a birthday cake. Nice training wheels. They're stabilizers. The way to a woman's heart is to tame the wild steed. You need to win her over. To impress a woman, the men of the Vanatu tribe build a hundred foot wooden towers, tie a vine around their feet, and hope their measurements are correct before diving off to touch the ground with their shoulders. Lakota warriors practice the sun dance, piercing the skin on their chests, pulling back with all their strength until the skin breaks to prove their strength. Chief Joseph, your namesake, once led his people a thousand miles through rain and snow, being chased by the U.S. Cavalry. Our people are great hunters. We are slaughters of bear, masters of wolves. We dominate man and nature with our power. I thought our people were from the desert and only hunted rabbits. 
Well, they were really big rabbits. <laughs> Hey, Agnes. Hey, where are your training wheels? Guess I didn't need them. That's too bad. Too bad? Yeah, I kind of got something for you. I got you a cake. And I also got you these. These are the most beautiful stabilizers I've ever seen. There's an old saying in my tribe. We learn to have the patience from the owl, cleverness from the crow, courage from the jay, who will fight off an owl ten times its size. But above all is the chickadee because of his indomitable spirit. Sure thing. Now you just gotta teach him about sex. <laughs> Leave that up to his mother. An evening highlight was Bronwyn's one-on-one -on -one interview with Danny Glover. He starred in major films such as Lethal Weapon, The Color Purple, Chasing Shakespeare, and Dreamgirls. You've also seen him in the television series Touch, Psych, Leverage, Human Target, and Brothers and Sisters. Now Mr. Danny Glover. And I'm sitting here with Mr. Legendary, Danny Glover, part of the Roby Theater, and he's an amazing icon. It's a very tough industry. There are a lot of underlying factors, especially for African-American theatrical actors who want to get in the business. It's a tough business for all actors, particularly for actors of color, whether they're Native Americans or whether they're African-Americans or whether they're Latino-Americans or Asian-Americans. It's always, it's always a tough ground. Roby provides a space, a home, for ideas. It provides a space, a home, for not only writers, but also actors, could like hone their skills, hone their, their talent. And, and it, it's that kind of space that you need in an industry, in a city, that is devoted primarily to film. Because acting is a craft. And I think the best place to learn the craft and the place that's always a space to be able to allow the actor to fail as they learn, because without success there has to be failure, is within the theater, in the frame of the theater. You don't learn on film the importance of silence, the importance of creating the inner life. You know, because if you do a play, the play's gonna last an hour, it's going to last 90 minutes. It could last two hours. But within that, 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 two, that period of time, you go from one, the beginning of the play, through the whole spectrum of the relationships that happen within the play and the characters. So you do that. So you have to be able to begin to build that within your own consciousness as you begin to perform. So you begin to use that, that using each particular stage as a platform as a, of growing at the same time, you're growing and developing the craft as well. And I think that's important. Now when you do a film, which is a deconstruction of many different parts, because the film is a director's medium, a camera's medium. So now you're doing 120 pages, say on a film, you shoot that auto sequence, you often shoot that, but you learn to build the whole character arc through, I think, the skills you learn on stage. What is the most vital skill that you have learned and experienced on stage? The ability to listen. The key to acting is the ability to listen. I don't care if you're on stage, I don't care if you're in front of the camera, the key to acting is the ability to listen. And to really hear. Because once you really hear, then you drop all the other kind of illusions that you place in front of you with respect to how you respond to what the character has said. Once you hear the person, then your body acts in some sort of kinetic way to what you hear and then responding to what you hear. But if you don't listen, then you can't, there's no way you can do it. If you can't hear, you already put a wall up. Thank you for allowing me to be right here on Native Ground with my brothers and sisters 
from all nations. Thank you for joining us on the FNX channel. I'm Daniel Herrera of the Miwok Nation. You're on Native Ground. And I'm Bell Lundy of the Cinnabon Sioux and Manda Nation. <laughs> it's Melvin Jackson Jr. and we're on Native Ground. Native. Yeah. <laughs> Belena Student. And I'm on Native Ground. Vinoy Barno, actress producer, on Native Ground. Hey now. Hi, this is Gil Robinson. On Native Ground is the mom. We're happy to be here. Thank you so much. Chad Coleman. And I'm on Native Ground. My name is Melina Gay, and I'm on Native Ground. Hi, I'm Julius Tennant, and I'm on Native Ground. Hi, I'm Viola Davis, and I'm on Native Ground. Hi, this is Oba Babatunde, and I'm on Native Ground. I'm Glenn Terman, and I'm on Native Ground. Native I'm Ground. Danny Glover, and I'm on Native Ground. <laughs> Rodriguez and I'm on native ground. That's very attention.